We've spent a lot of time this year talking about functions. Remember, a function is simply a rule that takes an input, does something to it, and then gives it out as an output. So we have a function machine here. We drop some number in. It takes that number and adds 5 to it, and it spits it out as an output. All of the numbers collectively that we put in, they're all called the domain. All of the possible numbers that come out are called the range. Today we're going to look at a very special kind of function, an exponential function. As the name suggests, an exponential function involves exponents. Notice that the word exponent is right in exponential. What's special about an exponential function? Well, the variable is the exponent. For example, y equals 3 to the x plus 2, or y equals 5 times 2 thirds to the x plus 5. Notice in both cases, the exponent is the variable. When we're dealing with exponential functions, there's a couple of different graphs that you could have. The first type is called growth. When we have growth, notice it starts really low to the axis, and then it kind of shoots up really quickly. Picture that you have something like 10 to the x. 10 to the 0 power is going to be 1. 10 to the 1 power is 10. 10 to the 2nd power, 100. 10 to the 3rd power, 1,000. 10 to the 4th power, 10,000, and it's off the top of the graph already. DK, on the other hand, is when a number kind of gets smaller and shrinks, and you get closer to the axis. For example, maybe you have 1 half to the x. So 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 half to the 1st is a half. 1 half to the 2nd is a 4th. 1 half to the 3rd is 1 eighth and so on and so forth. So notice it's getting closer and closer. So the next question that you ask is, what about these two things down here? Well, this is really just the growth function. When you stick a negative number in the front, it flips it over the axis. Same thing here. You take the dk function and just flip it over the axis. It's called a reflection. And so both of these are considered dk because it's decaying toward the axis. Both of these are considering growth because it's growing away from that axis. The graph of an exponential function has several features that we want to be familiar with. Most importantly is this red dashed line here. So here we have a dk function, and notice that it starts high, and it's getting lower and lower and lower, and closer and closer to that red dashed line. We call that red dashed line an asymptote. An asymptote is simply a line that the graph gets closer and closer and closer to, but it never really touches it. It never gets there. It gets microscopically close. We might need to get an electron microscope to see the space in there, but it's very tiny, and it gets tinier and tinier and tinier. I know that doesn't really make sense because it's against what we usually think. We're thinking, well, eventually it has to touch it, but it doesn't. Take a number like 1, divided in half. We have 1 half. Divided in half again, one fourth. Divided in half again, one eighth. Divided in half again, one sixteenth, one thirty second, one sixty fourth. And you'd keep getting tinier and tinier fractions, and they'd be really close to this number here. This number is one two. It'd get real close to it, but it never will touch it. You can keep cutting any number in half and just do it infinitely. So this dashed line here is called the asymptote. That's the line that the line get, that the graph gets closer and closer to, but never touches. So how can we tell by looking at our function if it's growth or it's decay? How do we know what shape it's going to have? Well, there's a simple rule for it. Take a look at the number that has the exponent. If the number is between 0 and 1, say 1 half, it's going to be decay. If the number is larger than 1, say 2, 5, anything like that, then it's going to be growth. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. In our first example, we have y equals 1 half times 3 to the x. Notice the number that has the exponent is 3. Because it's greater than 1, it's a growth function. It's going to look something like this. How about this one? Notice the number that has the exponent is 1 third. Well, that number inside is less than 1, so that's going to be dk. 
Number three, we have y equals negative four times one-third to the x. Again, the number inside is less than one and greater than zero, and so that's going to be dk. The special thing to notice is right here. Notice the number out front is negative. That negative number in the front, that causes the graph to flip upside down over the axis. So this is what that graph would look like because the beginning number is negative. And we know it's dk because the number that has the exponent is more than zero but less than one. How about this one? y equals three to the five-thirds x. So we have three times five-thirds to the x. Well, this number here, five-thirds, is really one and two-thirds. One and two-thirds is more than one. So this is a growth function. So be careful. Don't just look there to see if it's a fraction. You have to think about what you have. Finally, example five. This is a great little example, and I'm adding this one in. We have six times two to the negative x. When you apply these rules to determine if it's growth or decay, you have to look at the exponent and make sure it's positive. Remember, a negative exponent is like my grandmother. When she's feeling negative, she moved down. Because this is 2 to the negative x, it moves down. So we have 1 over 2 to the positive x. This number here is less than 1, and so it's going to be exponential decay. Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples involving the graphs. Graphing is not that hard. You're simply doing the same thing we've always done. We'll create a table of values, we'll draw in the asymptote, and then we'll construct the graph. Let's take a look at those examples. So let's begin by constructing our first graph. We want to graph the equation y equals 2 to the x. We know this is exponential because the exponent is a variable. We want to begin by creating a table of values. We simply put the equation in the calculator, and that gives us the table for us. Notice as our numbers get negative, the numbers get closer and closer to zero. Negative 1 gives me 1 half. Negative 2 gives me 1 quarter and so on and so forth. That indicates that our asymptote is going to be right along the equation y equals zero, or the x-axis. We actually knew this. The equation y equals two to the x is really y equals two to the x plus zero. The plus zero tells me that's where my asymptote is, right along the line y equals zero. I plot those points, draw in my asymptote, and then label my graph. My graph looks something like this. Notice that along the red asymptote, the graph is getting closer and closer to it on the left, and as we go to the right, it's getting higher and higher, quicker and quicker. This graph shows exponential growth. Now we can answer some questions about our graph. First of all, what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is at the point 0, 1. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Notice that as x gets larger, y also gets larger. The equation of the asymptote is very important. We'll be needing to find that quite often. Notice that it's a horizontal line, and it passes through the y-axis at 0. So it has the equation y equals 0. The other thing we need to know is the domain and the range. Domain is left to right. The graph goes to the left forever, and it also goes to the right forever. So our domain negative infinity to positive infinity. If you think of this as our function machine, we can plug any numbers in for x that we want. Now our range, well our graph can help us find the range. The lowest point is zero, but because it never hits that asymptote, which is zero, we use a parenthesis. And it goes on up forever, so we say the range is from zero up to infinity. That means that our machine, our function machine, will spit out numbers from zero up to infinity. In our second example, we want to graph the function y equals one-half to the x. Once again, we'll create our table of values. Notice this time, as our numbers get positive, they become smaller and smaller. Zero gives me one, one gives me a half, two gives me a quarter, and so on and so forth. Once again, the equation here really is y equals 0.5 to the x plus zero, meaning that our asymptote is going to be the line y equals zero, or the x-axis. 
I can plot my points, graph my asymptote, and then sketch the graph in. Notice this time I have exponential decay because it shrinks toward the x-axis. Now we can answer some questions. The first question is what is the value of y when x equals 5? All you really have to do is look at your table and it means if you drop a 5 into the machine, this function will give you 0 0.03125. What is the equation of the asymptote? The asymptote, which is drawn in red, is the line y equals 0. The domain, left to right, it goes to the left forever, it goes to the right forever. So our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, low to high, is from 0 to infinity. Remember, the zero in this case has a parenthesis because our line never touches it. It gets really, really close, closer and closer, but the graph never touches the asymptote. Take a look at our next example. We have the function y equals 2 times 1 half to the x minus 2 plus 3. We know that this is going to be dk because the number inside the parenthesis is a fraction. We also know that our asymptote is going to be at 3 because we have plus 3 at the end. We put this in our calculator and we get a table of values. Notice in the table as our numbers get bigger, 3, 4, 5, 6, the numbers in the y column get closer and closer to 3. I can sketch my asymptote at 3 just looking at the equation and then I can plot my points. Notice sure enough, that's exactly what happens. This graph shows exponential decay because it shrinks toward the x-axis. What is the value of y when x equals 5? Well, according to our table, it's 3.25. The equation of the asymptote, the asymptote is at 3. It's the equation y equals 3. The domain, left to right, negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, low to high, the lowest point is 3 and it goes on up to infinity. Once again, because the graph never touches the asymptote, we have a parenthesis on our 3 because it never quite reaches that point. Finally, we have the equation y equals negative 2 times 1 half to the negative x plus 4. A couple of things to notice right here. Plus 4 at the end tells us our asymptote will be at 4. Also, we have 1 half to the negative x. And we know that whenever we have a negative exponent, things flip upside down. And so we will end up with 2 over 1 inside the parenthesis, which will cause it to be exponential growth. I create my table of values, and this is what I get. Now I can go ahead and on my graph begin by plotting my asymptote. The asymptote is at 4 because it says plus 4. Now I plot my points and I get a graph that looks something like this. This is exponential growth simply flipped over the line of reflection, which is the asymptote. Notice it's flipped over because the number in the very front of the equation is negative 2, and a negative tells me that we're going to reflect over the asymptote. Now let's answer a few questions. What is the value of y when x equals 5? We drop a 5 in the machine, a 60 comes out, a negative 60. What is the equation of the asymptote? y equals 4. That should say y equals 4. What is the domain? We go left to right from negative infinity to positive infinity. And finally our range, negative infinity, the lowest point, up to 4, because 4 is where our asymptote is. So that should say from negative infinity to 4. And so there we have it. An exponential function is simply a function that its exponent is a variable. We can have growth or we can have decay. The line that it gets closer and closer to but never touches is called the asymptote. The asymptote is denoted on the graph by a dashed line. This is everything you need to know about graphing exponential functions.